So we're going to be looking at the Kogma Lulu versus Jinx Seraphine matchup. But we're looking at it from the enemy's point of view. Now here's the dumb part about this game was this guy was autofilled and has no idea how to play Seraphine. So the matchup didn't go perfectly well. But we can just kind of show you how I took over the game by beating an autofilled support while my support was on main rule. And that's kind of what this video will be about. So let's remove this off the screen. Let's go into the game. Should pop over, right? Perfect. So yeah, this will be for 37 seconds in. I just left the fountain, ran under tower. There's some kind of a fight happening. Oh, it's perfect. Look, my Lulu flashed late and died. So my Lulu has no flash and gave first blood to the fucking Jinx. So now we need to play the lane with a 325 gold disadvantage. Owner? Issuing boots. I wonder if... How much is a health pot to sell? I think you get 21, right? That wouldn't be worth. But potentially you could have sold a health pot and bought a longsword if he was if he had a little bit more gold. He had first strike. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's change the camera point of view. So they don't know that we didn't leash. You take same runes every game, Shen. 95%. Yeah, so Seraphine's talking to the enemy Shen. Because uh, she's a top lane main and she only cares about top lane. Let me chug this coffee real quick. Uh, what the fuck is happening here? That was weird. Oh, Poppy was trying to pull it so that they would keep autoing it as they were running to lane. <laughs> Interesting strategy. Yeah, Kogma didn't leash. He's here hitting a wave. Whoa, Lulu's in the bush, man. A little psycho. Oh, she got hit. So I'm, I'm a little bit cautious about auto trading for two reasons. One, um, you know, Seraphine can heal when she gets her W. And two, Poppy started bot side, so Poppy could just level two gank us. So maybe I should try to narrate this as if I'm them. So let's pretend. Okay, Kogma's level one, let's chase his ass. Ooh, got him with the zap, good. Okay, let's poke a little bit. Okay, Kogma's playing far back. Jinx wasted way too much mana here. Dude, look at how much mana they're wasting. I'm chilling full mana, I can turn it back on them because they're on cooldowns on every button. So here we can thin the wave. Kogma's thinning the wave so that he doesn't need to farm as much under tower and he can't be like level three tower dove by the poppy. Poppy is now top side, but like Kogma didn't know this. Now Kogma does know this. He's able to walk up and trade a little bit. Missed the cannon. I think he missed, not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I missed that cannon. Hard to narrate from their point of view. The Jinx is half HP trading with Sona. I'm not gonna narrate it from your point of view. It's too hard. So now they see the Diana. I'm sprinting at Seraphine. I wanna get her flash out of this. We know that their Poppy is top, so Poppy can't answer. We didn't get the flash, but we got the heal. Kinda sad, I really wanted Seraphine to flash. That way I could just flash on her after and kill her. Cause yeah, I mean, even if a jungler doesn't get the kill on a gank like that, it's good to force summoners without trading summoners, right? Especially when I'm at like a Lulu flash disadvantage. If I can make the Seraphine flash, then I'm at an, not an even lane. Then all I gotta do is set up a situation where I flash over Jinx traps and Seraphine's dead. Anyway, I keep my wave frozen here by constantly threatening that Diana is still ganking. Even though Diana is not ganking, they don't know this. Diana is right here in this bush, I remember. If you're looking for a 2v2. See? Good memory. But I'm faking that Diana is still bot. And it works really well because it also might make Poppy do some monkey stuff thinking that Diana is bot if I can fake it good enough. Dodge the Seraphine E. Seraphine W's the wave. So Seraphine. Oh, Q's the wave, sorry. Um, Seraphine did a lot to fuck over her Jinx this game because she's auto-filled, right? So Seraphine keeps hitting the wave over and over 
and then I've matched the pace of Seraphine so that I can keep my wave frozen right here. Like if you think about it, we are now 5 minutes in this game, when has Kog'Ma ever been in risk of dying? Literally only level 2 if Poppy decided to, to gank me level 2, or if she decided to tower dive me level 3. Outside of that, my wave has always been right here safe. And even in those situations, like there was outplay potential. If Poppy did go for those ganks, right? So now we just kill this wave and recall instantly. And let's look at it from their point of view. Obviously they know that we reset, but look, they just dumped the wave because they fucked up their timing. Jinx only missed two actually, it's not that bad for them. Now they're gonna push up. They should have froze this wave, by the way. Seraphine should have walked in here and Jinx should have froze this wave. Would have been the proper play for them. But anyway, she tries to push and now, guess what? I can do the same freeze right here again. Every time. Like this is the golden spot for AD carry. If you can make your wave frozen right here or right here in the defensive side, then it's good. And if you're on the aggressive side, you do not want your wave frozen like this. Like in Season 11, you'd get TP'd on and die right here every single time. Now it's not as bad, but you still don't want your wave like that. So yeah, Jinx does the proper thing. Seraphine should be doing this too, but Seraphine's autofilled, so she doesn't know. So yeah, Seraphine's just up under tower. Oh. Yeah, we still have the camera, so they don't know where my Diana is. I hit that Q blind. It's good to do that as Kog'Ma, but like it's good to do this as any champion. If you have a skill shot, like a Jinx Zap or whatever, throw it out a bush. If you do hit the target, then they're going to think that it's warded. And if you miss, but like just barely miss, they might still think that it's warded. And if at the very least, you get to check if anybody's in there, right? Without like face checking or just walking up and getting hit by their spells. But here I just outrange. So they don't know where my Diana is. They think that she might be here. So she just did the same thing, right? She throws a skill shot at the bush. I mean, I'm in a 1v2. Okay, they get spotted. The enemy had no interest in trying to like poke me out in the 1v2. They weren't even zoning me from XP or CS. Like potentially Lulu could have been mid. But yeah, my Diana was here this whole time. I mean Jinx should have known. I was tempted to flash this wall and then I ended up flashing him here instead. And then I get exhausted and I cry. I could have cleansed that exhaust for the kill. Yeah, so I think flashing it is fine. I needed to cleanse right now, and she was dead for this last two autos. Yikes. Well, at least we know for the future. Make sure to cleanse the exhaust. Yeah, let me just run away from Poppy. But then a fight breaks out for some reason. Poppy didn't realize that I was healing with pots or something. Let me just take the Poppy red buff. Oh, auto to creep, not creep. Shen ulted. Boom. Oh, I had a sick play later in this game too, watch. You guys want to see a, an absolutely cracked play? Just keep watching this, this YouTube video. Like, it was probably one of the best Kog'Maw plays I've ever done. So anyway, we can turn on all of camera now, so yeah, we're just doing Dragon. I rush Boots, by the way, as Kog'Maw. You want to start Boots 4-Pot and rush Boots. Here two Boots, that is. Berserker Greaves. Sometimes, situationally, you can go Tabbies, but you can just go Zerker Greaves every single game. Eventually, you'll learn like when to build Tabbies. Dude, my Shen just tried to freeze my way. So I remember this being kind of monkey, because we end up getting... Oh, I was kind of tilted here. Let me just explain some macro stuff for you. After we win this fight and we take the cannon, we do not need to touch this wave. Even minion rule states that if the wave is in the middle, it will just sit here in the middle. It won't go anywhere. It won't do anything. But if you look at top, he's pushing the wave. So he needs somebody to recall and get top to answer. Chen needs to recall right now and sprint top because there's nobody else that can go. 
So instead what happens is Zed moves to top with half HP. Like potentially he could get dove by Poppy or just by Jace 1v1. Like all of this macro ends up being terrible because my Lulu I believe pinged this wave. Somebody pinged Shen to do this wave and they should not have. It created this cascading effect where Shen stays to do this wave that I wanted to do after Dragon. So now my wave is being taxed as Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw can't farm anywhere. Our Zed is running top to catch a wave that he's not going to make it to in time. When Shen could already be the one that's here. And now there's nobody answering mid. So I just recall here. I don't even know if I bought what I needed to. I recalled with a thousand gold. I couldn't afford what I wanted. You, what you want here is a Rage Knife plus a Cloak of Agility. And you want to rush Rage Blade first item. So I think I end up just going Noon Quiver instead because it was a thousand gold, right? So I end up rushing Gale Force this game when I always do Rage Blade first item. I think Rage Blade first item is better on Kog'Maw. But anyway, I rush Gale Force. Partly because I'm tilted at this shit. Like, I don't understand what's happening here. Our Lulu is now farming away at mid to try to fix these rotations. Like, this should not be happening in any rating. And then my Shen ints my lane. Like, you must think that Lulu was coming. So I had to cleanse this ult and run away. And now there's a chance that I get dove. Because my Lulu is fucking mid in vision. Like, it was such a tilting experience right here. So all I can do is just sit back and try not to get and try to get as much CS as possible without dying. Like just a brutal experience. All because one person pinged for Shen to take a wave that he wasn't supposed to take. So now we're actually down gold when we were just up a free dragon after we killed him bot, right? So anyway, let's go back to their point of view. So now, I mean, they're winning this lane. They're in a situation that they're ahead of us because Shen just came down and did. I dodge all these spells, kind of smurf it. I mean, kind of risky, but Jinx is out of mana, so she can't even, like, rock it for me there. That's pretty good movement from me, and my Lulu had ult. There was a chance I could have ran them down here. So I dodged that, dodged that. Jinx is completely... Yeah, I probably should have ran her down, honestly. No flash, no heal, Seraphine, no ult, no E. She has it now, but she didn't at the time. My Lulu had ult. I'm pretty sure I could have killed Jinx right there. We'll know for the future. So yeah, I just hit my Q to get my taste of blood proc. If you check out my Discord, let's just go ahead and let's uh, show off the Discord a little bit. Uh, champion builds, let's pull up on stream. Add Discord. Okay, so if you look on my Discord, I have these builds for all the champions. Well, not all of the champions, probably 99% of the champions. If you look at Kogma, I recommend going green second. Now, in this game, I took red second. So this is the same, but the, the secondary tree, I took the old Omnivamp. It's hard to say what's better, honestly. Because I could have taken Revitalize here in the middle. So that Lulu shields me for more and Shen shields me for more. I haven't tested it enough to know if it's actually better. Statistically speaking, the green tree is better. But I think if you're good at using the red tree and knowing like how to proc your taste of blood by hitting Q poke, I think that the red tree might be better on an experienced player. But I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, you can see my build. I recommend going boots with a dagger, rushing into rage blade. Unfortunately, this game, like I said, I backed with the with the one dagger, so I just built the noon quiver. But you can see all the recommended items or whatever. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's get back into the game. So yeah, I have the red tree, so every time I hit my Q, I get this case of blood procs, which have already healed me 330. And I have three stacks. So another thing, when you're more experienced on COG, you can get stacks. And without stacks, this rune is completely useless. But in late game, if you have five stacks, it's very strong. Especially with the hurricane, because then your AoE healing. And the healing applies on your W, your W's on the vamp. So yeah, this Seraphine ends up building AP. You can see she's stacking a tier. She ends up playing it like she's Seraphine AD carry, even though she's auto-filled support. 
I think she might have got baited. She might have been autofilled and just looked up like the highest win rate support and picked Seraphine, not realizing that she was looking at 80 carry stats. But she does the wrong build. The wrong rune page? I'm not sure if that's the wrong rune page, to be fair. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it is, but I, I don't know for sure. I think Seraphine's support is supposed to go Guardian. I know 80 carry was Harry. Yeah, look, she just took this whole wave from Jinx. I'd be upset if I was Jinx. So this is why I dodge all the field supports, by the way. If you want to go look or like join the Discord, you'll see how much I dodge. I have not played with an all field support yet this season, and I've played like 25 games. I've also dodged probably 25 games. I will not play with an all field support this season. I do not care. It's not worth it. Like, look at what the Seraphine is doing. She's level 8 and Jinx is level 7. She hasn't left up the river to get pressure towards mid a single time in 12 minutes. Look at Lulu. Lulu's up here with Diana taking over the whole river. Seraphine's chilling back here, AFK autofilled. So yeah, like they can't even punish Hog at all. What does Darius ult do? It's a melee range. I want to call it an execute, but Pretty much he needs to stack up his passive on you. He doesn't need to. The more he stacks up his passive on you, the more damage it will do. And if he has all of his stacks on you, which I think is six stacks, it makes his ult do true damage. Or like maybe it always does true damage, but it does more damage. Okay, so right now Kog'Maw's bottom hitting plates. They still can't punish him because Poppy's top rifting. Whoa, Seraphine. Oh, I remember this fight. I think I died here. I cleansed the exhaust this time, but she had Gale Force finished and I had tier 2 boots. Yeah, she had heal again. That's where I fucked up and I flashed late. I needed to put damage on Jinx right here. And then I kind of do it right away. I needed to back up right here and just run away. Like a bait by heal. And I guess my Lulu used shield on herself, right? Exhausted. She ults. Yeah, she ults shields herself. Sad. Yeah, I just needed to back up. But anyway, then I waste flash like a noob. That should have been really good for us, but a little bit of a misplay. Maybe I run into the Jinx traps and cleanse that too. Let me see. The Jinx traps are really good. Oh, I did actually hit them. And then, yeah, I can walk through in a second. Yeah, I think it was just right there I needed to back up. It was good, 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 and then my W ran out and I had to back up. That's okay. So here is where we kind of pull the game back. Like, all of this weird macro, honest to god, happened from that first time where Shen overstayed, and now we lost a tier 2 top. Like, this all happened because we lost full prio topside from Shen staying to tax my way bottom and dying. The wiki has led me to believe he is the most broken champ in the game. I don't think he is broken. The problem with him is that he's just like a slow melee range champ. So like a Kogma, for example, absolutely decimates a Darius. Jinx does something pretty bad here. She prioritizes the Krogs over the camp, over the melee. Unless she comes back, I guess. It's not that bad. Okay, there's some shit happening mid. This Kog'Maw. Why is Kog not mid? I think I reset here. I mean, this is pretty much all you can do is Jinx in this scenario is push this wave. You can't rotate mid. Now you're being greedy for the tower. You don't know where Kogma is. Now you're being really greedy because there's three MIA. Oh, you try to alt snipe the Zed. Oh, there's the Kog. Yeah, someone pinged me to defend inner. No, I pinged someone else to defend inner tower so that I would defend mid. This is kind of how I saved the macro of the game. I gave my bottom tower so that I would save the middle tier one tower. And it actually ends up being good. I think I die. But it ends up being good. Just trust me when I say like this play is something really good to do. 
Um, how would I sum it up for YouTube without making this video too long? Basically, there's no proper way to play there. Because if I go bottom, Poppy can just rotate over and dive me here, right? Like we've seen how she was here. It's better to defend what you can defend than to try to force yourself to defend something that you can't. Now, yeah, I do end up dying, but we got Jace's flash, and it's a one for one trade. And the priority is that I didn't go bot and die for free. Really, I should have just sat mid and wave free. But trading one for one isn't bad. Not great, it's not something that you want to do often, but sometimes it's worth it for the risk, because there's a chance that I get the kill and get out without dying. Anyway, these guys now monkey invade our top jungle while Jace is dead. They get caught and they pay the price. Uh, it says his ult deals 300% true damage, 100% base on passive stacks. And it says he can recast his ult non-stop, only if he gets the kill with it. Which is pretty hard, because you gotta calculate it, and you gotta make sure nobody steals the kill. Dude, what the hell is Jace doing here? Just try him out, and you'll see, like, his weak side. It's hard to get in range to stack up your passive and stay on somebody. Ooh, the ward didn't see me. I took a different path. So yeah, Jace ends up inting because he has no flash since he just used it to die mid before this play. Now, instantly after killing Jace, we're pushing mid. Right here is where I just take off with the game. I'm 2-2-4 two, two, with a Gale Force and a Rage Knife. Building my Rage Blade second since I rushed the Gale Force. I do a couple of really core things from here that, that win the game. But mainly I get away with it because I I can see Seraphine all the time. Like here I can see Seraphine mid. So she is recalling an award. I recalled right here, I remember. And leave her ass to die. I've already recalled him in base, but yeah, I don't know. She didn't see the ward, I guess. Unlucky. Like 1k true damage? It is, but you gotta get on the target and stack up your passive. Um, before they like flash away or whatever, before you die to the Kog'Maw that's just shredding you. Yeah, so I had a feeling he was in here, I ulted. Now I'm pinging for my Diana to come clear that control ward for me, because I can't walk out and farm. So you're gonna see him here chilling. I'll probably farm with my Q. Yep. And I'll probably farm this with my R. Yep. So I don't know that Poppy's gone up here, but I know that there's a control ward here, so I ping Diana to come clear it for me. My Lulu's here so I can come out and farm. Turns out Poppy ran all the way around and she's now top. So we're like, damn. We're gonna go take over this dragon area because Poppy is topside. And we can see Seraphine chilling mid. Oh, she got vision on me here and my ward. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, Poppy comes back out. I hit by the zap, but it doesn't matter because there's no follow up. Now they're fighting us with no vision. They can't see any of the five players. But I'm just sprinting away as Cog. I think I might be waiting right here for some kind of a play. Yeah. Dodge the Jace poke. They see me slip into the bush. They knock Diana out of the fight. Poppy runs in solo. So I hit her with my Q, I get Shen ulted, here's the play, here's the play, we gotta watch it in half speed. I was so impressed by this. Watch this, I'm so far back, that if Poppy decides, like... So what happens here, Poppy decides, oh I've hit Diana out of the fight, I can just rush in on this Kog'Ma and Lulu. But the thing is, she doesn't realize, that by coming in here, she's overextending and leaving her team, to like a four man flash taunt over the wall, or a Diana flash ult. Like, they don't know how far um, Diana got knocked back, see? And then Zed can easily assassinate Jinx if Jinx tries to walk through. But Poppy, like, really throws this fight. Now, what I did that's impressive is my Shen doesn't look for a flash taunt. He's actually top and he TP, well, he ults to me. So here, Poppy's overextended in a 3v1, getting wrecked by a cog, right? She's definitely dead. I decide now, there's two carries coming, I Gale Force my Shen right on top for the double taunt. And I dodge out of this victory stun. And then Poppy's too low to even come back to help. 
Boom, hit, knocked up by the Lugu. Like, this was the most insane play. All chained off of a Kogma Gale Force into two people. And then Victor tries to flash away, but... Yeah, he's dead too. And then, I mean, like we said, the, Shana, or the Zed and the Dyna was able to jump onto the two carries because Poppy overextended. Now, Poppy gets at 1 HP, but, like, it was really Poppy's mistake right there that cost him the game. And then Shen goes chasing. Now, the lame part is, um, this is the worst time to win a team fight because you can't do Rift or Baron. You can't do Rift because it's going to despawn by the time you get there, and you can't do Baron because it's not there yet. So all you can really do is take like this tier 1 mid, let's turn the camera back. Like I I think about going Rift and I just decide to take the tier 1 mid and reset. That way we're reset and we're prepared for any kind of a 20 minute Baron shenanigan. I wonder if I should have went, yeah so she's going to go to her Krugs, just got spotted on a ward, not Krugs, Raptors, and then her Krugs after. But I remember I needed, uh... Oh no, I had enough for Rage Blade here. Jace is pinging my bounty. I had a 450 gold bounty. I definitely die one more time, and it's like a big time monkey mistake that I make. But we'll get to it and show you after. So yeah, we can see Kog'Maw is mid. Pretty much I want to watch the game from the enemy's point of view to see where Kog'Maw ever made a mistake. And where there was a vulnerability in his gameplay. Now that Kogma just so happens to be me, but you get the point. So yeah, Kogma's rotating up towards the Baron. Through a ward, which is fine because my whole team is here. Here I think I rotate all the way back around safely to mid. Oh no, I go top for the wave. But yeah, Victor is scared that we're diving his ass, but yeah, I just wanted to catch this wave. And then I'm probably going to do the next wave. Somebody needs to defend bottom. Okay, Zed is bought. Okay, our Shen is now looking for a play, even though our Cog was just top. It's fine, our Kog'Maw is back. He's here by now, because he's not top farming the wave, so Kog'Maw has to be here. Good. I mean, I'm here somewhere, I don't know where I am. I might be doing a red buff. Oh, actually I tried to do a sneaky play and rotate all the way to Jace. So I tried to show top, and then run all the way back here, knowing that they wouldn't have vision to kill the Jace. But... He sniffs it out, or like maybe it's because my teammates were moving towards him. So then I just go mid. Obviously we don't know that from the enemy's point of view, but that's what Kogma was doing during all that time that he was missing. Which I think is a good play. But yeah, Zed ends up getting the solo kill anyway. Like part of it could be that Jace is scared that people are rotating to kill him, right? So now Jace needs to play the 1v1 as if it's a 1v2, which in turn leads to Zed getting the solo kill. Like small movements matter a lot in high elo. In low elo, that shit doesn't matter because they don't look at the map long enough to know. So now I see that Jace shows, or Jinx shows bot right here, you can see ping 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 ping. The second I seen this fucking Jinx show up bottom, I spam the shit out of Baron. Like I don't even want to chase here, but then, oh yeah I remember actually. Okay, so here's, we're gonna watch this. I remember thinking it was a little bit psycho to flash on Victor, but it's actually good because we've already killed Jace, right? Jace died, 30 second respawn timer. The problem is we're, we can't do Baron with just Jace dead. He has TP. So we can't do Baron because it'll turn into a 5v4 for them with our Zed bottom. Somebody pinged Baron, but it was Lulu and I didn't want to do it. But then we see Jinx bottom. So now if we go Baron, it's 4v4 if Jace TPs. But Jace can't even TP for 15 seconds. So it's 4v3 until Jace can TP. So Poppy just initiated a 4v3. These two jump in. I have 7 seconds left on Jace, I see this Victor, I must know that he doesn't have flash, they just flash on him like this. But yeah, I Gale Force flash on Victor and kill him. I don't even chase the rest of the fight, you can see I'm pinging for assistance on this Baron, on the minimap. But let's see if I should have chased the fight. No, no I should not have, I did the proper thing. Don't chase the fight, you just go to the Baron. 
So now, if Jace did TP somewhere, it doesn't matter because now it's 5v4 for us. Period. Victor can't like respawn and TP. There's nothing he can do. So now they're face checking us. They're scared of like a Diana combo or a Shen Taunt. The Kogma Lulu to just sprint them down. Jace. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Jinx comes out to farm thinking that all five of us are on Baron. He gets fucked by his egg. What a tragedy, man. Always dodge auto field support. So yeah, then we're playing Operation Save Zed. Zed kills another person. Ooh, she's dead. I'm going to try to save her. Oh, wait a second. Damn, they saved her. So yeah, I just went top with Shen here. Because it's safer and because like we can't take middle because the middle wave's way the hell out here. But if I rotate top with Shen, the wave's already here. So I just stay up here and I kill the tier 2 tower, I believe. Magma. Oh, I guess I left. I guess I took a reset because dragon's spawning? Yeah, dragon's spawning in 30 seconds and it's soul. So, so far, I haven't seen any real openings in my play. I had that one bad play bottom tier 2, or tier 1, where I cleansed the traps, but then like died after my W ran out. So I take that one wave, they get a catch in the jungle. So now I'm hitting the dragon while my Lulu is zoning. So we have soul, it's a ocean soul, which is very good. Okay, what the fuck is happening here? Shen? Hello? So our Shen dives under tower. I throw an E, because I'm level 13, I just leveled up my E. I do not want to dive this. And then I Gale Force in, because Shen ulted Diana off. Okay. I mean, this is such a weird situation. My Lulu didn't dive with us, I think is what really made it awkward. Like, either we're committing to the dive or not. And, like... I think it is good to commit to a dive there, because it's 25 minutes, and it's just a tier 2 tower to dive, it's not that big of a deal. So anyway, we don't end here because I do monkey stuff, no we all reset here. Yeah, so Conan Minion doesn't get in range to tank the tower, so if we had waited for this next wave, you can see three of them would be alive. It's better to just reset, a little bit of a weird situation, but... A cannon minion with Baron buff doesn't actually get in range of the tower, so the tower would have been taking 50% damage and we would have been tanking it. Like if we had a normal cannon there, we could have ended the game. But because it was a Baron cannon, it's kind of useless in that scenario. But at least we identified that and we reset. So we can see Kog'Maw mid, Zed bot. And doesn't have R, but Kog'Maw is playing safe. Okay, our Diana's going in 1v4. Yeah, so this is the smart thing to do here. You can't help this guy. Our Lulu could have ran directly to him, but yeah, I mean. It's not worth it. I almost got blocked here. Put some crazy damage down. I cleanse the stun. Could have cleansed faster. If I cleanse the stun faster, it's a free double. Yeah, that's a fine play. I mean, Jinx just walked into me. What the fuck? Had to be tilt, right? Actually, I think she Gale Force. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So the items are Gale Force Storm Razor and half of IE components versus Gale Force Rage Blade Hurricane with a pickaxe and a Lulu support. Uh, Jinx? Are you okay? So right here I need to cleanse right away. I cleanse so late, like halfway through that stun. Honestly, I tried to not get stunned by walking towards the Poppy. So watch, you can see here I'm against the wall. I see Poppy coming in and stun me, I start walking towards the Poppy. Like I'm not even auto attacking, I even Gale Force and she still pushed me that far. Not great though, what I should have done was I should have just pathed this way. And then if I don't kill the Jinx, at least I killed the Poppy who's running into me, right? Kind of a risky play to go for the Jinx and the Poppy like that. 
Like, what if Victor had Flash and, like, Flash fucking one-shot me with ult or whatever he does? Anyway, now I'm too low, but I have Ocean, so I'm regenning. I just need to go fight some other stuff for a bit. Not really sure what I do, but, oh, here's Hog. I remember this, actually. How do I get down here without getting seen? Ah, I remember this play. Smart. So this was a good play by Kogma. I walk all the way around outside of the wards, blast plant over the wall, come down here through lane, which they wouldn't have warded, control ward over this wall to make sure that we're not getting flanked, and then I go into play. So I mean, Victor should know that somebody's here because the control ward showed up on the map. Now this point is just, yeah, he's done. But now Kogma has bought full HP. I'm zoom this up a little bit, Daughter. So now I would say 3v4, and our Shen is dead for 30 seconds, so we can't ult. I'm trying Operation Save Lulu, I think I needed to let her die. But then I just do some Pogma one trick stuff. I mean, yeah, okay, let's watch this in half speed. Lulu should be dead. It's 3v4. I guess they don't know where Diana is. Diana's in base. So they're like kind of scared of us. Because they don't know if maybe Diana is here. Poppy can't get a good stun angle on me. Now she's scared. I flash over the traps. Ace tries to flash away. I don't know. They just got smoke. That shouldn't go so bad for them. That's just some fucking some crazy Kogma player, honestly. I think flashing like that's fine. I have the Lulu ult to back me up if I need it. Like you definitely don't want to be flashing in as an AD carry in a 3v4, but it just kind of works in that situation. Definitely not something you'd want to do every game. And then here I think I end right after. But we should end here, right? Because they're three dead, Poppy's respawning in two seconds. I'm pushing mid because it's super minion, more important than pushing this wave. Now I'm going to hit the top tower, so right here, here's where I make a mistake. Dyna hits a big combo, but Victor still has crown. Jinx Gale Force is out it looks like. Oh, she actually whiffs it then, because Jinx Gale Force is it. And here I take tower aggro and I Gale Force away from my Lulu. Lulu needed to be running directly in, because she's not tanking the tower anyway, I am. Instead I think she passed around like this. But Victor's stuns after I Gale Force is the big problem that I did here. This was the big monkey death that pretty much stopped me from winning the game. I do win the game, but it, like I could have won right here. But watch what happens. She Gale Force is out, it's good. Victor knows that I have Gale Force, I guess. So I'm hitting a stupid crown, and then I Gale Force, and right after I do, he exhausts W. Now I need to get out of this stun. But instead of auto attacking, instead of just running straight through, because I'm trying to kill her, okay, I die. What I should have done was, well, A, not dive at all, but B, hold my Gale Force until after he drops his W. Yeah, his exhaust kind of saved the um, Jinx also. I was an exhausted Jinx was definitely dead. So anyway, I mean, I'm dead, so it's not like I'm doing anything wrong here. I probably made a mistake. So now my whole team dies because Kogma was bad and ran it down the end of his base for no reason. Definitely my fault. We're still 10k ahead, even after giving all those shutdowns. But definitely not something you want to do. Just monkey for fun like that. So now we just go Baron and then top, I think. Maybe Baron and then Elder. Blue team can't really answer at this point. They're just too far behind. They're gonna try to rush the Elder and give us Baron. But I think we know this, so we don't even go to Baron and we just wait here to get a pick. They just seen Diana here somehow. I guess the 
the Scryer's Bloom, the plant. Might have spotted her. Oh, me and Lulu two man Baron. So now they feel like they need to rush it. But Zed was here waiting in a bush. Dino gets caught one shot. Shen also dying off. Ooh, okay, good Zanyas, and then Kogma shows up. This time I Gale Force out of the W like I'm supposed to. Oh yeah, both. Where the fuck was Lulu? She recalled after Baron! What the fuck? Nah, Lulu's trolling. Why is it going all laggy now? Because I hit, hit back 15 seconds. Dude, she fucking recalled here. Whoa, look at this, man. What's going on? I don't know. My spectator tool is like bugged. Look at that. It's like freezing up. Go back one more time. Oh, man. It's like... Like a slideshow. What's happening? Alright, well, um... Long story short, after we do that, we take the Elder and we run it down and end the game. So yeah, my spectator bugs like breaking, or spectator tools breaking, so I guess that's the end of the video. Good Kog'Maw game breakdown, uh, my build was... I went with Sand, so something else to note here. I should have went Spirit Visage instead of Wit Sand. I was doing out the math afterwards and Visage would have been better. Because I didn't need the damage of the Wit Sand, and the uh, Visage would have increased the shielding from the Shen and the Lulu, would have been far better. And the healing from my Red Tree which did 3.5k small note something to keep in mind anyway that's the end of that video